you want to live the abundant life, Deeper Life Bible Church invites you to our annual national convention beginning at 5 p.m. on Thursday, July 26th to Sunday, July 29th, 2018. The venue is Deeper Life Bible Church Convention Center in Kinston, North Carolina. The thief cometh not, but with the steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ has come to give you the abundant life. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I do. The theme this year is the abundant life. Ministering, Pastor Debbie Lefumi, Pastor Michael Dada, and other anointed ministers of God. Also ministering to the glorious voice of choir of Deeper Life Bible Church. Come and experience God in the abundance of power. Come and experience the abundance of life. Have you felt like something is missing in your life? That there's more to life than the one you are living? Then you, yes you, are invited to obtain an abundant life during our 16th annual convention. Continuous divine miracles, uplifting music, and power-loaded sermons. A weekend shaped to transform your life. The date is set for July 26 to 29, starting 5 p.m. on Thursday, all day Friday and Saturday, and then coming to an end on Sunday. Join us in New England region and Holiday Inn at 700 Miles, Standish Boulevard, Taunton, Massachusetts, with Pastor Dale Me and more of God's children. Join Pastor Dr. Roth ECN and more of God's leaders at Deeper Life Bible Church, 213 East, 144th Street, Bronx, New York. Pastor Raheem Oni and other ministers will be expected at Deeper Life Bible Church, 23 South 20th Street, Irvington, New Jersey. If you live closer to Deeper Life Bible Church, 5075 Barfold Road, Denton, Texas, then attend the program with Pastor Thompson, Adirene, and Great Plans Region. Pastor Michael Dada and Mid-Atlantic Region will be meeting at Deeper Life Bible Church, 2000 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Kinston, New York, Carolina. Lastly, Pastor Dr. Ike Okafor and Pastor Dr. Akin Adeyemi will be waiting for you at Deeper Life Bible Church, 245 University Avenue, St. Paul, Minnesota. The General Superintendent, Pastor W. Queen, will be ministering at all of these locations. Come and be filled with daily preaching, prayers, and praises from all of our leaders. Join the people of God for an all-round, life-changing experience that I assure you, you cannot miss. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name. Thank you for the service we render to you. Thank you for the service we render to the church. And for the service we render to one another. We pray, Lord, you'll bless our service to the conversion of souls and the progression and the progress of your people in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding. Help us to be told wondrous things out of your word in Jesus' name. And prepare every one of us, young and old, for the coming of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Please, you can see now. We're coming to 2 Thessalonians. And I'm reading from chapter 3, from verse 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. We're looking at it from verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that she withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which you received of us. That's what tradition means. Not after the teaching, after the doctrine, after the principles, after the exhortation, after the message which you received from us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example to unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you 
that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, walking not at all, but are busy bodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not a word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company, no fellowship with him, that he may be ashamed, yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. We're looking at those verses today because we don't often come to passages like this. And it's very important for you and for me, for every one of us to understand that God is calling us to the fulfillment of his promises. Sometimes you look at a believer around you, or maybe even you look at yourself, and you are wondering, does God have any prosperity plan for me? Does God have any principle, strategy of success for me? And sometimes we fold our hands and we're not doing everything we ought to do. And so Paul, the apostle, in talking to the Thessalonian believers, he told them, yes, he has spoken about the coming of the Lord. In every chapter, in 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians, he speaks about the coming of the Lord. And he talks about they're patiently waiting for the coming of the Lord. But there are some people that will use all that as an excuse. Well, the Lord is coming. If the Lord is coming, why should I do anything? Why should I be engaged in anything at all? And so Paul the Apostle comes to tell us that we do not wait for the coming of the Lord in idleness. We do not wait for the coming of the Lord in laziness. But we we'll wait for the coming of the Lord, doing everything we can do, naturally, physically, and spiritually. As we look at this passage, I'm talking to you today on the prosperity of diligent believers in recession. You've heard that word, you've read about that word, recession. It's another word for farming. It's another word for economic downturn. It's another word for lack of job. It's another word for nothing doing. We don't have anything. And we know the condition in the country. And therefore, there are people that will fold their hands and say, after all, the Lord is coming. And when the Lord comes, he'll take us away. And therefore, we don't have to do anything. Paul the Apostle says, no, we have to do something. That everyone young and old should be engaged in something. The Apostle here calls us to profitable labor for profitable service and profitable business. As you look at this passage in summary, number one, it talks about wisdom for dutiful bread winners. Wisdom for dutiful bread winners. It says, you need to have your own bread, your own food. You need to do something and toil so that you'll be a breadwinner for yourself, for your family, for your children, for everyone. And even you'll have enough to spare and to give to other people. Number two, warning against disorderly behavior. He said, I'm hearing that among you, you call yourself believers, and yet I see that there's disorderly behavior among you. And he warns such people. He said, it should not be. Number three, in this passage, it talks about watchfulness against disguised busy bodies. Watchfulness. It says they'll come. They have nothing to do. They become busy bodies and they get involved in matters that do not concern them. And he warns us and he says they'll disguise themselves. I'm a brother. I'm spiritual. I'm steadfast. I'm sanctified. But you know the condition in which we are. In fact, I have such a body and such a vision. All I want to do is to go about preaching and preaching and preaching. I about, uh, you know, work to do. Uh -uh. The Lord even told me I must not touch anything at all. He says, watch against them. He says, there's watchfulness against disguised busy bodies. Number four, wealth for diligent businessmen. Wells for diligent businessmen. It says, when well, you see somebody that is diligent, 
and he knows that here is life. I must do something. And then he does it according to Romans chapter 12, verse 11. It says, He is not as lawful, but is diligent in business. Number five, well doing of dependable brethren. He says, uh, Those who are dependable as brethren who should be and should not uh, abandon the well doing. Keep on doing good. You see other people, don't allow what they do or what they don't do to influence you in the negative way. Keep on doing the right thing uh, that you ought to do. He says, Ye brethren, be not weary in well doing. Number six, withdrawal from disobedient brothers. Withdrawal. It says, you find anyone, it says, I'm a brother, I'm a believer, I'm a member of the church, and all this that we're talking about, that you work with your hand, and you do something definite, it's not doing that at all. It says, we we'll withdraw from such an individual. Number seven, working in a desirable business. Get something doing. You might have to study to get to a good job. Do that. You might have to join study and work together. Do that. Whatever you do, make sure that you're working. You're laboring. And you exercise in a desirable business. As a look at this, he wasn't just talking about uh, the believers. He spoke about himself. And he said, we're laying the example to you. So that there'll be prosperity, all around prosperity. As we become diligent, even in this period and this time of recession. The Lord is going to bless you. And as we are diligent, the blessing of the Lord will be upon your work in Jesus' name. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. It says, For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail. For laboring night and day, because we will not be chargeable to any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. There are many people that should uh, use uh, preaching as an, uh, as an excuse. I'm preaching, I don't have time for any other thing. I'm so spiritual, I can't touch anything that is secular. Paul the Apostle said, you know what? We are preaching to you. And we're preaching the gospel of God unto you. But you also understand, we're laboring, we're working night and day. So that we will not be parasites. will not be leaning upon you. And will not be chargeable to any of you. It tells us in Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. And I'm reading here from verse 33 and from verse 34. Verse 33 says, I, I have Converted no man's silver or gold or apparel. He says, you know what? I do not uh, desire what belongs to other people. I'm not trying to cheat other people, make them work, and then I'm doing nothing. He says in verse 34, Yea, ye yourselves know that these sons have ministered unto my necessities and to them that are with me. As you look at Paul the Apostle, anybody will understand that he was the greatest apostle in the New Testament. Hold that in one hand. The greatest apostle in the New Testament. We're coming to the Old Testament now and we're looking at the wisest king in the Old Testament. I'm, I'm showing you something here. What the greatest apostle said... The wisest king in the land of Israel also said, we're coming to Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22, uh, calling us to real service, calling us to real study, calling us to real labor. It tells us in uh, Proverbs chapter 22, and I'm reading here from verse 29. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, says thou ye man, Diligent in his business, you'll be that man. Amen. You'll be that woman, that boy and that girl in Jesus' name. You'll be diligent. You will do something. You'll make a mark in this land. You'll make a mark in this single life that you have. You'll wake up. If you have not been, been up and doing before from today, you will wake up and do something. Says thou, a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. In Proverbs chapter 6, and I'm reading here from verse 6, it says, 
go to the ants, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provides her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. Proverbs chapter 30, we're looking at verses 24 and 25. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. You will not allow an ant to be more active than you are. In a good amen there. You, you know, you'll not be happy if somebody said, no, it's worse than an ant. It's less than an ant. It doesn't know how to do anything. There is no ant that you find in the field or anywhere that doesn't have something doing. And here is a man. Here is a woman. Here is a boy. Here is a girl. Here is a believer. Here is a brother. Here is a sister. Cannot do anything. You know what the Lord is telling us? Number one, from the Old Testament. Number two, from the New Testament. The Lord is bringing in the wisdom of the, great, of the greatest king. The wisest king. And the Lord is bringing the teaching, the admonition of the greatest apostle, bringing everything together and telling us this is the way to go walk here therein. It's saying learn from the ants. Learn from the ants. And it's saying listen to the apostle. Learn from the ants and listen to the apostle. Now as we learn from both the apostle and the ants, what, what's the, what are they telling us? And what's the push and what's the drive? What are we going to achieve? I pray that this will bless your soul. I pray that this will bless the work of your hand. And our students, I pray that this will make you to rise up. You will excel in your studies in Jesus' name. And I pray that where all the people have failed, you will succeed. Am I talking to somebody there today? Where they have failed, you'll succeed in Jesus' name. Now I'm bringing the ant and the apostle together because they're leading us the same way. There are, instead of three, there are four points today because I'm using the letters of the word A-N-T-S, ants. A-N-T-S, ants. A, apostolic admonition or foresight. Apostolic admonition. What the apostle is admonishing us, what he's teaching us, what he's exhorting us, and what he's instructing us about, the ants are also telling us the same thing. They show it by their lifestyle. They show it by the things they do. And the apostle is saying, look at the ants. Someone is saying, look at the ants. And then they give us admonition. Apostolic admonition with foresight. Number two, notable networking. Notable networking for the future. As you look at the apostle, he next work with other people. He networks with Apollos and with Timothy and with Titus and Epaphroditus and all the other people. And he calls them my fellow helpers in the ministry. We're networking and it's noticeable as well as noble, as well as notable. And it is for the future so that your own future will be secured and so that the future of the church will be secured. And then you think about the ants and how they network together. I'm not sure you often see just one ant, a lone ranger, doing this or that, but they network, they nurture, they cooperate, and they work together. Point number two then, notable net networking for the future. Number three, you think about Paul the Apostle, and you'll see somebody who never gets tired. You see somebody who never gets weary. You see somebody who doesn't take a back seat and said, I'm tired today. I don't think I can do anything to know. It's up and that's why he said a number of times, night and day, night and day, night and day. We labor night and day. We pray night and day. We preach night and day. We minister night and day. Number three now, tough-minded tenacity despite feebleness tough-minded tenacity despite feebleness you look at those hands 
and how tough-minded they are. You don't find an ant, even though they might appear weak, they might just step on any of them and then they are gone and they are dead. But even then, they are tough-minded. And if an ant can be like that, that toughness of the mind, the Lord will give you. That tenacity the Lord will give you. So that whatever the feebleness you have and whatever weakness you have, you rise up and you get something done. I say somebody is going to work hard from today. And you just, you just keep at it, you keep at it, you keep at it. And success is going to come at the end in Jesus name. Number four, sustainable strategy against famine sustainable strategy you know there are some strategies you cannot sustain there are some strategies you cannot maintain but there is strategy you sustain look at paul the apostle and he keeps going and going and going and uh, you know last year he worked for the lord and this year still working for the lord and then you are coming to acts of the apostle chapter 18 you are coming from chapter 9 and he's still saying we wrote he joined priscilla and aquila and they were working because the strategy he had was sustainable. He comes to chapter 20 and he said, These signs have labored and these signs have ministered to my own needs and the necessities of other people laboring all the time. He comes to Thessalonians and he tells them that we labored among you and we did everything we ought to do spiritually and materially because the strategy he had, God will give you the strategy you will not be out of job i said you'll not be out of job something that is sustained you're doing it and doing it and doing it and great blessings are going to come upon your life in jesus name sustainable strategy against famine number one apostolic admonition with foresight apostolic admonition with foresight we're coming to second thessalonians chapter three Second Thessalonians chapter 3, and I'm reading here from verse 6. Second Thessalonians, we're looking at chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 6. He gave admonition, he gave exhortation, he gave doctrine, he gave the instruction as to what the people of God should do. That we're not going to say that there is a time of famine, a time of recession, a time when you know everything is uh, down, there's no electricity, and because there's no electricity we cannot do this uh, to even get this done and that done how is that possible since there we don't have this or that he said he is giving us admonition and we should have foresight and we should not be backward looking he tells us second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 6 now we command you look at that now we command you he's saying that you know you need to listen to this i need to obey this command look at verse 10 even when we were with you this we commanded you this we commanded you he's still reminding them he said it is not an advice it's not Oh, if you, do you want to walk or don't you want to walk don't you think you should walk he said no this is coming to you as a command look at verse 12 it tells us in verse 12 he uses that word again it says now them that are such we command and exhort by our lord jesus christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread it says the command comes to you from the apostle apostolic admonition it tells us in ephesians uh, chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 uh, look at the command and the admonition is given us and we should have foresight we should have foresight why are we walking i don't want to be a parasite why are we walking? I don't want to depend on other people. Why are we walking? I don't want other people to misunderstand my life and feel that you know, I'm trying to uh, take advantage of their generosity. Why are we walking? I don't want uh, you know to live uh, such an idle life that I'll not be able to do for other people what they're doing for me. Why are we walking? I want to be able to educate my children and I want to feed my family. I want to be able to I fulfill my marriage vow that I will take care of this woman I will take care of our children I want to be a man that is respectable that's the foresight we have he's studying us in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28 it says let him that stole steal no more 
but rather let him labor now he is born again now he is converted now he's the child of god rather let him labor walking with what tell me out loud we need to walk with our hands but first of all before you can walk with your hand you'll walk with your heart your heart your mind must be set your heart must be directed your heart must be renewed and all the you know backward thinking in your heart i cannot i will not i must not there's no security there's no electricity there's no this there's no that all that will get out of your heart to start with and then walk with your head walk with your head you have to think through what can i do what's brother so and so doing what's sister so and so doing what are my neighbors doing you walk with your heart you walk with your head you walk with your hands and then he tells us now walking with his hands the thing which is good the things which is good the things that are good for me to start with the things that i know i can succeed in that i have talent for that i have flair for that i have the privilege of that that you think of something good for you this will not injure your health this will not injure your family this will not scatter your family it is good for you and then it's good for the word of god it is not something illegitimate it is something legitimate it's something proper and then it says that ye may have to give to him that needed instead of they giving to me instead of me waiting on them and uh, you know i'm saying uh, do you have uh, some pennies for me there do you have some dollars for me there do you have some uh, opportunity for me he said no i'll give to others instead of my waiting uh, you know for people to give unto me we're looking at uh, romans chapter 12 romans chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 11 not slothful in business it's talking to believers not slothful in business the people that think that once if you're spiritual no way you cannot touch anything physical if you're spiritual all you can do is to open a prayer uh, something somewhere you prayer shared and then people are coming and then you're telling them i've been praying for you i've been fasting for you and you know all we can do now is just pray i cannot uh, do my business anymore i cannot follow a proper trade and he said no as a child of god not slothful in business fervent spirit and serving the lord that you are up and doing in business up and doing in your in your studies as a child of god as a student doesn't mean you are not spiritual you are even still serving the lord first thessalonians chapter one first thessalonians i'm looking at uh, chapter four and we're reading from verse 11 first thessalonians chapter four and here we're reading from verse 11 it tells us, uh, you know, what we're to do. It says in the first uh, chapter 4, verse 11, and that she study to be quiet, endeavor to be quiet, train yourself to be quiet. You remember what we read in the book of Proverbs? It says that the talk of the mouth tended to penury. Stop talking and start walking. And that she study to be quiet and to do your own business, not other people's business, but your own business. Get something you can say, this is mine. I will work hard on this. I will excel in this. I will earn income on this to do your own business and to work with your own, tell me, your own hands as we commanded you. Always reminding them, we're waiting for the coming of the Lord. Don't let that drive us to laziness, idleness, not doing anything. Be a, person, a happy person because you are hard working and because you know you are extending uh, what you have to other people. It says in verse 12 that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. You are going to come to the place where you lack nothing. Yeah. Your wife will lack nothing. Your children as uh, as uh, high as they want to be educated you will not lack the resources in jesus name you will educate your children you'll be proud of those children look at where i brought my child to and your child will be proud of you in jesus name we're coming to uh, we're coming to proverbs again proverbs and we're coming to chapter six proverbs 
chapter 6 and I'm reading here from verse 6 Proverbs chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 6 it's sending us now to the ants and it tells us in chapter 6 verse 6 it says go to the ants it says don't just sit down there do you have the tendency of repeating yourself I don't have talent I don't have work I don't have education I don't have certificate. I don't have any training. And then you are mourning and you are sitting at home there. It says, you know, as long as you keep on sitting down like that and you're not getting up to even watch others who are doing something, you'll be telling yourself all the reasons in the world where you should, why you should not do anything. It says, get up and go. And then it says to the ants, thou sluggard, consider her ways. It says you consider the ways of the ants, and then you'll become wise. Wise people there? Yeah. You'll become wiser. Yeah. Have you no guide, no overseer, no ruler? What does that mean? No preacher, no motivator. Not, you didn't have somebody that will say, why are you sitting down there? Why are you, why are you not walking? It does not have anybody like that. And yet he provides her meat in the summer. And gathereth her, full, her food in the harvest. And what's uh, Solomon telling us there? What's the spirit of God telling, telling us there? He says, number one, this is antidote against laziness. Antidote against laziness. He says, Look at those little, little insects and look at those creatures of activity. And they have activity with foresight, antidote against laziness. They're feeble, they have the weaker nature. In fact, you know, they could have pitied themselves. We know that ants don't look at the mirror. If they looked at the mirror, they would not like their shape. I don't like my height, don't worry, rise up and walk. I don't like my face, don't worry, rise up and walk. I don't like, you know, the way I am. And when I go out comparing with other people, what I have, what I don't have, it says ants don't do that. They don't look at the mirror and say, I'm not qualified. And they are antidote against laziness. Number two, it says, there for us, activity in labor. You'll not see an ant just staying idle, standing idle, sitting idle, or just moving idly. There's also always something to do. And you must fill your time with profitable activity, activity in labor. There's the absence of lukewarmness. Men may be lukewarm, not ants. And women may be lukewarm, not ants. And children, young people, they may like play more than work, not the ants. You see the ants, there's the absence of lukewarmness. There's nobody to push them or pull, pull them. There's nobody to plead with them and to drive them to duty. And they take advantage of littleness, advantage of their littleness. Some people say, I'm small, so I cannot work. Make that an advantage. Make that an advantage. Those ants, they make advantage of their littleness. And then, number five, they are addicted without leadership. Addicted to work, addicted to labor, addicted to hard work without leadership. And they do everything they do as the way, as they ought to do it. And they become successful. And I'm talking to successful people there. You will work. I will walk. I can't hear my people. You'll walk and the Lord will bless the work of your hand in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. I'm looking at verse 4. The, slow, the, the soul of the slugger desireth and has nothing but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Prosperity is coming your way. The soul of the diligent shall be made fat. We're looking at verse 11. In verse 11, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. But he that gathereth by labor shall increase. He that gathereth in by labor shall increase. I will gather in labor. I will increase. I said I will increase. I said I will increase. When you wake up in the morning, you say, it's the day the Lord has made. It's the day of increase. It's the day of progress. It's the day of prosperity. And prosperity will flow your way in Jesus' name. 
Ecclesiastes, we're looking at chapter 9, verse 10. Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, and we're reading from verse 10. Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, reading from verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. You know there are people that are saying, you know, that is a small work. You, you find there are some people that are only selling toothpicks. Toothpicks. They have this kind of toothpick and that kind of toothpick. Toothpick there. And you see, the toothpicks, are, they, they're so small. And yet, they make their prosperity out of that. Whatsoever thy hand find it to do, do it with all their might. The people that are selling second-hand clothes, they go to get it there. They go to sell it over there. And they do it with all their strength and God is prospering them. Through that they build their own houses. I'm talking to somebody. And through that they are buying their own cars. I'm talking to somebody. And through that they educate their own children. Because you know they didn't count anything to be small. Anything to be minute. And it says whatsoever thy hand find it to do, do it with thy mind. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave with that thou goest. You will work. You will not be idle. You will be ashamed of idleness. And when we ask you at the end of the day, close of the day, what did you do today? Then you, you, you think about what you have done today and it, it was nothing. Tomorrow it will change. Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 3. Matthew chapter 20 verse 3. And he went out the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace standing idle in the marketplace these people they've even gone out of their houses they've gone through the streets they didn't see any security or any lion on the street or in the way they got to the marketplace start walking uh-uh they were not they're in the marketplace where others are busy they're in the marketplace where young people, older people are busy. They're in the marketplace where you find all kinds of people selling all kinds of things and they are idle. Things will change. Look at verse 6. And about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and says unto them, Why? How can it be? Why? Why should it be like this? Why stand ye here all the day? day idol 11th hour 11th hour the day is about closing and he said why have you been idle all the day he wanted things to change and he said even though it's the 11th hour you'll still work you see well i've been lazy for so long that idleness has become my uh, habit that habit will break today the lord will help you and the Lord will promote you. A good work you will do in Jesus' name. Then that word and, A, the first letter, N, the second letter. Notable networking for the future. Notable networking for the future. As we look at Paul the Apostle, let, let's come back to the passage we're looking at in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, where well, you'll find that uh, Paul the Apostle was not a lone ranger, a man of talent, not a lone ranger, and a man of zeal, but not a lone ranger, a man of vision, but not a lone ranger, a man that, you know, he could have done anything he wanted to do all by himself, but no, he would not, because he understood and he prized the uh, importance of the nature of networking notable networking you know, for the future it tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 7 it says for yourselves know in the plural that, that ye ought to follow us us is you know group himself with other people for we you know he is with other people they're networking together it's not saying I can do it all alone and then push all the other people away he is only perfect when all the other people are imperfect and therefore he cannot work with them. He said, no, we behaved ourselves, not ourselves, disorderly among you. Neither did we, you see that word again, we, there is not an I here, there's not a lone ranger here. These are people that are working together, networking together. Neither, neither did 
we eat any man's bread for naught, but rot with labor, we rot with labor and travail night and day, that we, that's the word again, that we might not be chargeable unto any of you, not because we, that's the word again, plural, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. He was a networking man. You'll work with other people. I said you'll work with other people. But you know somebody who's going to work with other people must cut off discouragement from his mouth. Condemnation from his mouth, criticism from his mouth, and pride from his life. I am great and they are small. I am good and they are bad. I am intelligent, they are not intelligent. I have certificate, they don't have certificate. No, you blend together, you work together. That's how you'll make progress. And I thank God this is your year of progress. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 6. I have planted Apollos watered. Networking. I have planted Apollos watered. There's proper division of labor. There's something I can do. There's something you can do. And then we complement each other. And we work together. You're going to be productive. One shall chase a thousand, and two shall put ten thousand to flight. You multiply your productivity. You multiply your success as a team together with other people. It tells us, uh, I have planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. We're looking at chapter 12, verse 21. Chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're reading from verse 21. In verse 21, here is what it tells us, And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. We need all the members to work together. We need all the components to work together. Look at any machine, and you're going to see that one, one part is coupled to another, one part is coupled to another, and it has as those uh, different parts of the machine as they're working together. That's how they move forward. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head. No, he gained the head. Think about that. I saw the head is high. Yes. I saw the high head is intelligent. Yes. I saw the head is, you know, up and doing. Yes. I, I saw the head is the highest of them all. Yes. But look at this. And the head, again, the head cannot say to the feet, I have no need of thee. The highest cannot say to the lowest, I don't have any need of you. We must network together. And as we do that, you are going to succeed. We're looking at chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, brethren in the plural, be ye steadfast, some movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, inasmuch as she know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What Paul the Apostle did in the secular, he carried to the spiritual. As he was zealous in the physical, he was zealous in the spiritual. As he was up and doing in the day to day running of uh, things in his life, he was also up and doing in the spiritual and was passing that across to the Corinthian believers. And he said, You must network, work with other people. Look at how Jesus did it. We're looking at Luke chapter. Chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, uh, notable networking for the future. Notable networking for the future. In the secular, uh, you, you know the gain you're expecting, the profit you're expecting. You know, if, if you work with other people, that profit will be sure. That profit for the future, it will come. In the spiritual as well, you're working so that, you're laboring so that, and you're doing everything you're doing so that heaven at last, you will not me seven in Jesus name networking networking some are singing networking some are preaching networking some are praying networking some are recording networking some are distributing the message networking some are printing networking some are organizing the programs it is the networking that gives us the progress for the future Luke chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 1 after these things the Lord appointed all the 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and every place whither he himself would come 
he himself will come. He was still going to get there. But he was going to appoint other people to network along with him. If Jesus did it, you will do it. I said you will do it. You have to love people. You have to accept people. You have to believe in people. You have to trust people. And you have to appreciate people for you to network with them. But if you're all, they won't always find him fault and always criticizing, they don't do that well. Why are they doing it like that? You'll not be able to network with other people. Ah, leave it, leave it. You will spoil it. I'm the only one that can do it well. You'll not be able to network with other people. But networking is what the apostle is telling us and teaching us and it says we should network together in John chapter 4 John chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 37 networking and herein is that same true one soweth and another repaired one soweth and another repaired it's not that I'll do the sowing I'll do the reaping I'll do the gathering I'll do the storing I'll do everything I'll do the taking to the market I'll do the calculation I'll do the commercial I'll do the accounting no let's distribute the work among ourselves and let us network we're looking at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. This will push you forward. This will move you up. Are my people still there? Yeah. Are you going to succeed beyond your expectation in Jesus' name? Mark chapter 2. And we're reading here from verse 3. Mark chapter 2 verse 3. It says, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which were born of four. Do you see the networking there? Just one man was sick. And they wanted to carry him to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they had the future in mind. This man, if we can get him to Jesus, he'll be well. He'll get up. He'll become a man again. And he will do something unforgettable in life. And one person thought of it. And the other one planned it. And the other one also said, I'm going to get involved. And the four of them networking together. See what happened. A miracle happened. Like a miracle is going to happen in your life. God will give you a miracle. As you have love towards other people, you accept other people, you walk with other people, you appreciate other people, and you say, I'm going to get into new table networking because of the future. We're looking at Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4. Luke chapter 5, verse 4. It says, Now when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep. You will launch out into the deep and let down your nails for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. At the word of the Lord coming to us today, you are going to go out and you will let down the net. You'll do something. You will achieve. Achiever, where is he? Where is she there? You will achieve in Jesus' name. <laughs> Nevertheless, at thy word. I didn't think that there's no job. That's what they said. There's no employment. That's what they said. And I even, uh, you know, they're telling us that, you know, things are worse now. The exchange is like this and it's like that. And nobody can do anything now. No, you will do something. And God will bless that work of your hand in Jesus' name. Then it says, and when they had led, when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. Look at networking verse 7. And they beckoned unto their partners. And they beckoned unto their partners. Notable networking for the future. That as you are thinking and dreaming, look at what I'm doing. It's so limited now because I've been doing it all alone. Can I find a brother? Can I find a sister who is in this same trade? Can I find a brother and sister who knows about uh, this chair and then is doing a little work aside? I'm doing my own little work aside. Can we combine together so that we can make more progress, faster progress? Yes, you can. And as you do, the Lord will surprise you with miracle. 
and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other sheep that they should come and help them and they came and filled both sheep so that they began to sink. That, that means it's uh, going to be a real great uh, work uh, that you're doing in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. Uh, and I'm reading here from verse 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. We're reading from verse 3. In verse 3, it says, And because he, Paul the Apostle, was of the same craft, that's physical work of the same trade. Because it was of the same craft, the same trade, he abode with them and wrought. That work wrought, that's the past tense of work. They wrought, they worked. For by their occupation, they were tent makers. But you see, he wasn't journeying with unbelievers to do that work. He wasn't partnering, networking with unbelievers to do that work. We're coming to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, we're reading from verse 3. Romans chapter 16, verse 3. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Um, in a profession, they were joined together. In the labor of their hands, they were joined together. In the work, secular work, they were joined together. In their craft, their occupation, their profession, they were joined together. But look at this now. In their spiritual task, help us in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house and so you find uh, these uh, people joined together spiritually joined together and also uh, in uh, labor in profession joined together Let, let's come back again to this proverbs chapter 13 proverbs chapter 30 and i'm reading from verse 24 proverbs chapter 30 verse 24 there before things which are little upon the earth but they are exceeding wise the exceeding wise uh, then he gives us uh, one of the four verse 25 the hands are a people not strong yet they prepare their meat in the summer have you uh, looked at uh, those ants, the way they work? They prepare their meat in the summer. One, they anticipate the future. Anticipate the future. Do you ever anticipate the future? Uh, they, you know, the time is going to come. I'm going to pay the school fees of my children. And therefore, it is not at that time you then get the school fees. You are preparing now. And then the things are becoming hard. If you are buying piecemeal, you're going to spend a lot of money. Why don't you think through and think about the picture and buy in bulk? If you're buying a loan, you might be paying so much. Why don't you join two, three, four people together and buy that same bag of rice and then divide? And then you're not going to pay so much. It anticipates the future. Number two, they assist their fellows. Those uh, ants, that's how they work. They assist their fellows. If the work is hard for you, I come to help you. If the work is tough for me, you go come to help me. Number three, they acknowledge their feebleness. There is sufficient Lord, without you, we can do nothing. That's why we pray. Lord, without you, cannot make any progress. That's why we pray. Lord, we need your strength. Who is sufficient for this? Is Look at the time in which you are living. Look at the economy and look at things going down. Who can fend for himself at this time? They acknowledge their feebleness. They attend to duty without fault finding. You don't find uh, ants fighting against each other, but they, they just continue and they attend to their duty without fault finding. All the you know fault finding, it will discourage you to unite with that brother or with that sister. If you're looking at the negative, you'll not be able to move forward, but you are forward looking people, forward moving people this year in Jesus' name. And you know, five, they abstain from frivolities. As you look at those signs, they just concentrate on the essential. 
we need to carry this thing. You need to take this from this place to that place. And that's exactly what they do. And they advance towards their future. They advance towards their future. The future picture they had. Let's say you're a student, for example. And then you say, this is a course I want to do eventually. If I'm going to do that course, then I need this subject, this subject, and this subject. And because of that, you study those subjects. Because of that, you link up with other students studying the same thing, not the people who are just gossiping and busybodies. And you work together. You burn the midnight oil together, and you are advancing. I said you are advancing. And you advance towards your future in Jesus' name. Okay, your future is I want to get married. Wonderful. How are you advancing towards the future? Get a good job and then get something that you're doing. When we say a good job, a good job doesn't mean that you're in an air conditioned office. A good job. You know, you get something, you're selling something, and then you're accountable. And then you're saying, look at what I gain, look at what I gain. Nothing becomes a company, nothing becomes an industry. And then you're Moving forward, you, have, you advance towards the future. And then for us, all of us, because we're going to heaven. Anybody going to heaven there? That's the future. Salvation, advance towards that future. Sanctification, advance toward that, uh, towards that future. And nothing will take that hope away from you in Jesus' name. We come to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at tough-minded tenacity despite feebleness. Tough-minded tenacity towards uh, despite feebleness. As we're talking about feebleness, and then we're talking, you say, I understand. I understand that about the ants. I don't understand feebleness as we talk about Paul the Apostle. Or maybe you have not read what he said. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. You're not the only one to feel your weakness. Paul, the apostle, felt his weakness. You're not the only one to feel that you don't have any strength. Paul, the apostle, thought and he felt he didn't have any strength. There are times to feel weak. There are times to feel feeble. But in that feebleness and weakness, you're still going to succeed. The grace of God will be multiplied in your life in Jesus' name. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're looking at verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. For his letters they say are witchy and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible, feeble. Even the other people commented and he said his speech is weak and contemptible. And look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and I'm reading from verse 9. It's Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle. It says in chapter 1 verse 9. For we are the sentence of death in ourselves. That we should not trust in ourselves. But in God which raises the dead. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, and in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us? Deliverance has come for you. Let's back to let's back up to verse 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure. Here is Paul the Apostle talking. He said, there were times I was weak. There were times, there were times I was feeble. Then he said that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life. But he had something going for him. Even though he was weak at such times, he was tough-minded. And if you're not like that, you won't be able to walk. You're you just selling in a place. And the people have been selling there before. They say, no, there's no place for you here. You cannot come over here. And they push you away. And they scatter your things. If you're weak and you say, well, I've tried my best. But you know, the people of this world, they don't want you to do anything. And then you change. And then you say, I'm going to do that again. The change you have made. And then you want to do another thing. When you get there, you meet opposition, rejection, resistance. And he push you away from there. Say, what am I going to do now? And because I'm weak and I don't have, I don't have all the resources to go and take uh, an office in a story building over there in a posh place. And then they're pushing you here and there. Become top-minded. You will work. This is your father's land. 
the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And nobody will drive you out of your father's hand in Jesus' name. There's an inheritance for you. There's progress for you. And there's work for you to do. You will do it in Jesus' name. Uh, look at uh, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. I'm reading from chapter 12. I'm reading from chapter 12 and in verse 9. And he says unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I am and but when I am, let the weak say, let the weak say, you know, you know, some people say, I don't, I'm, I don't know the kind of brain I have, your brain is good. I don't know the kind of strength I have, your strength is all right. I don't, I don't know the kind of, uh, you know, debilitating sickness I have. No, you are not sick. You are healed by the, by the stripes of the Lord in Jesus' name. You can do it in the stripes of the Lord, in the power of the Lord, and in the provision the Lord has made for you. Behold, I set an open door before you, and nobody will shut that door in Jesus' name. For when I am weak, then am I strong? That man had a tough mind, a tough mind, tough minded tenacity, despite feebleness. He just kept on going, just kept on going. You will keep on going. I said, You'll keep on going, and you will reach your destination, and you will reach that success in Jesus' name. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, For you remember, brethren. Our labor and travail for laboring night and day. For laboring night and day. You know, there are people that will complain about the night. Everybody is sleeping. I should be sleeping now. And they have said that if you don't have a seven, eight hours sleep every day, you're going to get into a problem. And I need to sleep. I've, I've been looking. I've not got my seven hours, my eight hours. And that's the excuse to sleep also the night. And then during the day, it's so hot. And the heat is so much. They cannot walk during the day because it's hot. They cannot go through the night because it's, you know, it's a night. But Paul the Apostle said, uh -uh, night and day, it doesn't matter with me. Night and day laboring because we will not be chargeable unto any of you. We we'll preach unto you the gospel of God. Night and day walking, that's tenacity. That's holding on to it and you will not let go. Until your hand reaches that thing, you'll get it. You'll keep on doing it in Jesus' name. Look at uh, chapter 3, verse 10. Chapter 3, verse 10. It says, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face. I tried before. I couldn't make it so. I gave up. Not Paul the Apostle. And from today, not you. You will not give up. I said you will not give up. You know, sometimes you're even working in an office and it's like uh, they want to make your place a uh, vacant and uh, so that they can bring in their whoever they want to bring in and they cannot do it directly. So they try to frustrate you here, frustrate you there so that you yourself will say, the way things are, it's like they don't want me. Nobody lost me here. Nobody wants me here. And then you resign and give up your work. No, that's all the past from today. You will not resign. Nobody will take your name out of that their register. And you will not take your name out of that place because you are tough-minded. I said you are tough-minded. It says night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Perfection is coming to you. We're coming now to uh, chapter 3 of um, Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians, we're looking at chapter 3, verse 8. Second Thessalonians, chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 8. It says in verse 8, Neither did we eat uh, any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail, 
labor and travail night and day that is tenacity there that we might not be chargeable to any of you not because we have not power but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us for even when we were with you this we commanded you that if any would not work because an excuse maker neither should he eat you'll have a strong mind and you have a top mind you'll work i said you'll work i said you'll work proverbs chapter 6 and we're looking at uh, verse 6 it says in verse 6 say go to the hands thou sluggard consider her ways and be wise i thank god you are wiser now than yesterday which having no guide or overseer or ruler provides a meat in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest being tenacious what does that mean you give no excuse for failure no excuse for failure you don't come back home and tell your wife you know uh, my wife there's no job there there's no money there we're going to go hungry today and this weekend no excuse for failure number two no exemption from faithfulness you're going to be faithful you go out there and you're going to do honest job honest work and the work you do is not something they come and call you and say what kind of work is this you are faithful no exemption from faithfulness and then number three no entanglement with fleeting fancies fleeting fancies the things that are you know they're just for the day and the interest the people that don't have anything doing but yours is solid work therefore number one you have doggedness with discipline doggedness with discipline you stay at it you stay at it you stay at it and you continue until you keep on digging until you reach the oil or you reach the water doggedness with discipline diligence without despair there's no crying there's no self-pity why am i like this why it's always my luck and you know to get a difficult things and nobody ever gives way for me why, why why was i born in a country like this it's everywhere if you're going to succeed and thank god you are going to succeed there's diligence without despair there's decision with determination i determine that this life that i have will amount to something i will do something somebody there i will do something and therefore there's decision with determination deafness to distractions deafness to distractions you're going this way in the path of duty and you know, you're going to hear noise you're going to see sight that's the sight before you are going to see but you are deaf to all those uh, distractions and you have dedication until death dedication until death and the lord will reward the labor and the work of your hands in jesus name do you ever get tired yes we do sometimes we get tired what do we do when we get tired we do our duty we do what needs to be done tiredness or no tiredness that's what we're referring to a top-minded a top-minded tenacity we're looking at judges chapter eight judges chapter eight judges chapter eight what you have started you will finish the project you have started you'll finish that building you are putting up you will finish that career you are you are you know running after you're going to see a successful end in jesus name judges chapter 8 i'm looking at verse 4 and gideon came to jordan and passed over he and the 300 men that were with him tell me the rest of that verse tell me out loud say it with other people faint yet pursuing them faint yet pursuing them that's a person that has a mind to succeed and that's coming upon you today you will prosper you will succeed you will not fail you will not falter we come to sustainable strategy against famine sustainable strategy against famine 
There's famine in the land, no doubt. There's recession in the land, no doubt. There's joblessness in the land, no doubt. And there is scarcity in the land. Yet, there is strategy that will pull you over, that will make you to succeed. And thank God you are there today. You are a candidate for victory. Amen. Candidate for prosperity. Amen. And candidate for success in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Now them that are such will command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work strategy with quietness they work don't blow any trumpet with quietness they work don't make any announcement with quietness they work don't brag with quietness they work don't boast with quietness they work don't go around to other people i had a message i'm going to do something about it when you see me next week you will see prosperity don't brag don't talk about it. with quietness they work and eat their own bread and then you say but ye brethren be not weary in well doing you know what during the time of famine and recession there are people that become stingy the people that will not give out anything anymore, they don't understand that at the time of recession, at the time of a nationwide poverty, that's the time you do well. That's the time you do good. That's the time you distribute. That's the time you give to all the people. Because it tells us, look at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather, let him labor, walking with the sense, the thing that is good, look at this, that he may have to give to him that needeth. It's a time of giving. At a time when it appears there is famine, at a time when it appears, what are we going to have? What are we going to get? And the little you are having, you are going to remember the Lord's house. You are going to remember your neighbors. You are going to remember the brothers and sisters. In well doing, you will not slack. We're looking in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, and we're reading from verse 34 and verse 35. Acts chapter 20. We're reading from verse 34. It says, uh, Ye, ye yourselves know that these sons have ministered unto my necessities and to them that are that were with me. I have showed you all things. How that so laboring, ye ought to support the weak. Giving. Ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So if you have been receiving and receiving and receiving now, prosperity is coming your way. And you are going to do what other people have been doing. You are going to give unto them. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke chapter 6. Reading from verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Give and it shall be given unto you. Are you hear your amen? amen? Good measure. Amen. Press now. Amen. Shaking together. Amen. Running over. Amen. Something is coming your way. Amen. Prosperity that you cannot, that you cannot resist. Amen. Prosperity that you cannot withhold. It says, shall men give into your bosom. For with what measure will the same measure that she meet with her, it shall be measured to you again. You will have it in Jesus' name. First Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17. The time of recession is the time of hard work. And is the time of generous giving. Giving to God. Giving to the house of God. And giving to the servants of the Lord. The workers who are laboring in the vineyard of the Lord. We're looking at uh, First Kings chapter 17 verse 10. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering those sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And she did not complain, prophet. The well is drying up. 
there has not been any rain. Even the brook where you are coming from, why are you living in that place? Is it not because it's drying up? And I go to the well, and there's no, and the water we have now, uh, we do not have enough for us and for you. But we're told, and as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, you will have. But a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise and behold I'm, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and and die you will not die if I give out this what will happen something good will happen to you how will I pay my children's school fees? Abundance will come your way. How will I finish that house and building? You will finish. I will even do more than that in Jesus' name. Well, we don't have anything. We know the strategy to become rich and the strategy to be prospered at the time of recession. The start strategy, sustainable strategy is giving. Look at this in verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. I come to tell you today, fear not. This poverty will not get to you. Fear not. This hardship will not continue your life. Fear not. Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. But make me thereof a little cake. What's the next word? I said, what's the next word? God must be first in your life. The house of God must be first in your life. The people of God must be first in your life. It says, go and make thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord, prosperity is coming upon your head. The barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail. Until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. You are leaving the service today and you are going to do according to the teaching, the, the prophecy of the word of God upon your life in Jesus' name. She went and she did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat, tell me, many days and the barrel of meat of meal wasted not neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the lord which is speak by elijah we're going to make progress this year the strategy has been given unto us forget the past face the future and the lord will bless your life and bless your family in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. I'm reading from verse 10. Proverbs 31. Verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman, a virtuous man, a virtuous believer? For her price is priced if above rubies. The heart of her husband does simply trust in her. The heart of the bridegroom, Christ, does simply trust in him and the bride, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool, not lazy, not idle, and flax, not idle, not lazy, and walketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth and giveth me to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, this is not an idle woman, idle man, idle bride, and buyeth it. For it was the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She, she gathereth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. A candle goeth not out by night. Your candle will not go out by night. She lays her hand to the spindle 
and her hands hold the staff. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she stretches, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow, of recession, of cold, of poverty, of joblessness for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself covering of tapestry. And her, her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known by the gates. His wife is known by the gates. I thought my brothers would say amen. amen. When he seated among the elders of the land, she maketh fine linen and selleth it. She maketh and selleth. She maketh and selleth. I'm talking about somebody there. She maketh and she maketh fine linen and selleth it. And delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. Yeah. Have I seen the people? Yeah. They will rejoice. Yeah. Time to come. Yeah. This poverty will not touch your family. Yeah. And then we're told strength and honor. Our clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. In her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to, her, to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Eateth not the bread of idleness. He will prosper. She will prosper. You will prosper. You will do something. You'll work. You'll work hard. Someone, someone. We're looking at verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth a fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither. Read the rest for yourself. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever I do shall prosper. Say that. Whatsoever I do shall prosper. You will do something. Go out and work. Go out and prosper. Rise up and let us ask for the grace of God. And the strength of the Lord. And the power of the Lord. And the provision of the Lord. Let's pray that God will help us to be obedient to his word. And we are going to prosper. We are going to prosper. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord, open my eyes to see the work that I ought to do. Help me to take this apostolic admonition to heart. Take laziness from me. Take idleness away from me. Lord, I want to work. Give me the work to do. I want to serve. Show me the service to be engaged in. In this recession, I don't want to be a parasite. I don't want to be a beggar. Let the work flow my direction. Let the jobs flow my direction. Lord, I will work. I will not be idle. I will not be lazy. And whatever my hand finds to do, I will do it with all my strength. And I count on the fulfillment of your promise in my life. Notable networking. I will not push away other people. Draw close to them. Learn from them. Listen to them. Labor with them, joyfully, happily work together with other people. Top minded tenacity. I won't give up. I won't give up. I won't give up. My life will be a happy life, blessed life, prospered life. Where I failed before I go back there and go and succeed. Where I ran away before because of fear, because of 
imagined lions in the way. I'll go back there. I know that all those lions are lions of my imagination. Get rid of them. Walk through. Push through. Be top-minded and tenacious. Don't allow weakness of ableness to get the better part of me. I will work. I'll follow the principle of sustainable strategy. I'll give, it shall be given unto me. I'll help others. Many people will help me. I'll lift up others. Others will lift me up. I will be a blessing. I will be a blessing to other people. Benefits and blessings, breakthrough, will come after me. I take care of my family. I feed my wife. I won't be begging other people to feed my wife for me. Train my children. And I'll be looking up to all the people to train my children for me. I seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto me. I will prosper. I will succeed. The Lord will make a way for me. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Prospered people, successful people, yeah. provided for people, yeah. happy people, yeah. people with a future. Yeah. The Lord bless the work of your hand. Yeah. Make you to forget the years of sorrow yeah. and the years of hardship. Make you to forget your failures and come to the bright side of prosperity and success in Jesus' name. If you know that blessings are before you, where are you? The Lord will confirm it. The little you do will be multiplied a hundredfold. And the more you do will be multiplied a hundredfold. Raise up those hands and receive. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because you are thinking good, good concerning us. Every brother, every sister, every husband, every wife, every father, every mother, every boy, every girl, every child, every student, every youth. Lord, I pray you rain blessings from on high upon everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that the days of poverty and penury will be over in Jesus' name. The day of plenty, the day of prosperity, the day of blessing, and the day of joy and happiness. Let it come in Jesus' name. Lord, we know the work is there. When Hagar was crying, thinking that Ishmael was going to die. Because there was no water. You opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and she took. Lord, I pray you open the eyes of your people. The jobs that are there were thought were not there. Open the eyes of your people. And the provision there were thought was not there. Open the eyes of your people. Nobody will take that job before them. Nobody will take that uh, opportunity before them. Lord, according to your promise, set an open door before everyone. That as your people walk through the open door, prosperity will come. Success will come. Provision will come. Bless them spiritually. Bless them materially. Bless them in every walk of their hand. And I pray, Lord, everyone will have a testimony. No feebleness will hinder anyone. No weakness will hinder anyone. Any sickness, any infirmity will say, Get out in Jesus' name. 
any curse will say get out in jesus name any work of the devil hindering their progress take it away from them in jesus name goodness and mercy will follow you prosperity and success will follow you and all you need the lord will supply provide in jesus name lord we pray that the strategy of giving and receiving help us lord we manifest that and we receive abundantly in jesus name as we give give back to your people great measure good measure press now shaking together running over running over running over upon all your people in jesus name lift your people above the unbelievers around them if those some believers are prospering we well, thank god but make your people to prosper beyond and above the unbelievers around them in jesus name the blessings of the lord go with you a great discovery of signs and wonders before you the open doors before you nobody will close thank you lord for the blessing let it remain let it be sustained let it stay with them ever in jesus name testimonies for everyone testimonies for every family testimonies for every local church prosperity in the midst of adversity confirm it in every life in jesus name we pray